This is a short video demonstrating the correct sequence for donning or putting on the Holdfast Series 3 EOD suit. It's important that the suit be put on in the correct sequence and if the correct sequence is followed then the suit can easily be donned in a time of 5 minutes or less. When putting the Holdfast Series 3 EOD suit on it's important to start from the bottom working your way up through all the components until you reach the top, which would be the final uh, process, which would be donning on the helmet. After initially putting on the overshoes or boot protectors, the next component in the dressing sequence is the integrated groin protector. As you can see, the operator can assist by simply holding the groin protector in place initially, while the assistant then adjusts the straps for optimum fit and comfort. Next in the dressing sequence, the EOD suit trousers are put on. The best way to do this is to hand the open trousers from the back around the front of the operator. The operator does up the waist cummerband band himself then you pass the shoulder straps over the shoulders and once attached by the velcro adjust the velcro straps to ensure best height for the trousers to hang just above the overshoes last action for the trousers is to do up the brass zippers on the back of each of the trouser legs taking care to ensure that the zipper slider is in the correct position to facilitate the emergency evacuation system. The spine protector is now fitted to the shoulder straps of the trousers. We try and align the spine protector with the base of the neck and the top of the shoulders. And then the waist straps simply just loosely fit onto the velcro on the cummer band of the trousers. Now the smock or jacket is dressed on the operator. First the assistant presents the right hand sleeve for the operator's right arm, followed by the left hand sleeve for the left arm. Then the smock is closed by pulling the closure up over the left hand shoulder by aligning the velcro and the same is done again by aligning the velcro for the closure on the left hand side of the waist. At this point the elastic straps for the hand protectors are slipped over the top of the fingers into the palm of the hand. This is a good time to make sure the in suit harness cable is free and available for the helmet connection. The blast plates are fitted by inserting the groin plate into the lower kangaroo pouch followed by the chest plate into its corresponding pouch just above. Then the shoulder straps are passed over the shoulders and the buckles are engaged and tightened if necessary. Then the chest webbing belt is passed through the guide between the two plates and the buckle is engaged and tightened. Now the battery pack found in the battery pouch on the rear right hand side of the suit can have its inline cable connected. Power can now be verified as live in the suit electronics by checking the LED light on the front of the controller. This should be displayed as green for a healthy charged battery. Finally the EOD helmet is donned. This is slipped over the operator's head, who lifts up his chin so that the helmet buckle can be engaged. Then the inline connector at the back of the suit is joined, providing power to the helmet and the ventilation fan, which will provide a flow of air to the front of the helmet, preventing the visor from misting up. The visor can then be affixed to the front of the helmet by engaging the clasps on either side. Then the collar is done up by engaging the velcro nice and snug around the sides of the helmet and finally the emergency evacuation straps are put in their correct positions.
The operator will now demonstrate the emergency suit evacuation. He first pulls the emergency handles on the smock. This will also disconnect the electric cable to the helmet. He undoes the quick release buckle on the helmet. He then pops all the red tabs on the trousers, including the zips at the back of the trousers. Steps out of the trousers and walks away in less than 20 seconds.